Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the model builder in ArcMap. So I'm actually in ArcMap 10.5 and I've got some very, very, some very simple data here. That these green um, icons are actually just capitals and uh, and I've got a, a, so just this hand-drawn polygon over here. Um, let's show you, that's actually Dublin. Um, that, that, that's, th these green dots are from uh, OSM, OpenStreetMap data. So um, I, I, I'm just going to do uh, just sort of two or three processes with this data um, using toolbox functionality, uh, and uh, and just show you how you can put these together in a, in, in a nice uh, workflow, uh, which is sort of easily understandable and very clear uh, as to what's uh, going on. And uh, when you've got a particularly aut automated uh, repeat. Um, iterative sort of processes you want to keep running etc and uh, and things like that model builder is a great way to to sort of cover off uh, those sorts of requirements but anyway let's get into it so the model builder that's the button click on that and you get a very empty canvas um, window stays on top uh, I think that's sort of by default um, so how do you actually use it you, we're going to be using these two layers. I've got open here, capitals and, and demo. That's actually from a personal geo database. That demo one and capitals is just a shape file. Um, so um, it can be uh, really any, any source data. I can click on the usual add tool uh, or add data button. Add data, to, uh, which is the same as that, add data and the add tool is effectively going to any um, toolbox. But I, I can also uh, just drag files from my table of contents. So I can just grab capitals and drop it into the model builder window. So that's one of my inputs. I, I want to draw a buffer around these capitals and then do some kind of uh, analysis on the buffer to see where it intersects an object, it intersects this funny polygon, and I'll probably generate some statistics as well, some summary statistics at the end of it, just to um, add another uh, add another uh, tool in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is the buffer. So like I said, you can go, you can click on Add and and go to the uh, sort of toolboxes. Um, and, and go to system toolboxes and go go from there or you go to my toolboxes if you've got anything yourself or you just go to the art toolbox window here and drag over what you want so I'm going to take the buffer command and drag it onto the uh, canvas here so it's very it, it's shown sort of hollowed out and empty this is because all the parameters all, all, all the sort of um, settings haven't been uh, configured yet so the first thing I'm going to do is use connector to say actually capitals is going into the buffer. That's and it's the input features. So I select input features. So capitals is going to be used um, uh, for the buffer. But uh, to create buffers, I can click on this little select arrow and just double click, or I could right hand click as well, and set what actually um, is the uh, uh, buffer distance. So um, I'll just do, I don't know, three degrees or something, three decimal degrees, uh, various other settings, um, and then we can call that capitals buffer in there, going inside the default uh, geodatabase that I use. And there you go, it's all sort of coloured in, uh, meaning it's all sort of accepted, it all works, and um, you can you can do some resizing like that if you like. These all move around, the connectors stay, draw how you like. Uh, so the little tick is to validate. There's no error messages appear. So let's uh, let's run this and see what happens. So I hit hit the run button. See how the red uh, buffer flashed red for a moment because it because it was processing. Run is completed. Press closed. Uh, so um, what's the answer? What, what where are these uh, buffers? Well, if you right hand mouse click, you can actually say add to display. And now now they appear there. Of course, they are in that uh, geo database. So, if I in our map, if I clicked on Add Data and go to um, one of my f 
folder connection is this one and go into my default GDB you'll see capital buffers there so it's inside the database but that right hand mouse click add to display uh, is something you probably uh, use a lot really uh, very handy so there you can see these are the in decimal in the decimal degree uh, uh, distance uh, buffers drawn around these dots so they're all there and it definitely intersects, one of them anyway, intersects this uh, uh, boundary. I'll remove that for a moment. Let's do something a uh, bit more interesting. Let me just drag these things down a bit. How about uh, now what we'll do is do the intersect command and we'll do it on uh, this polygon just called demo. So I drag the polygon on and of course for an intersection you're looking to where one intersect one object intersects another so there's two inputs so on the right hand side here I can go to art toolbox and drag intersect onto the canvas again you see how it's hollowed out it's not colored in or anything there's parameters to set there's input etc so I go to the connector and say okay well one feature set of features is the input features is uh, this demo and the other from there that's also input features so when you double click or right click and just say open same as double click you'll see the two features uh, sets of features in there the two layers they're already populated uh, and various other settings I'll just leave it as demo intersect um, so so now I've got these two processes going on I could hit validate if I want no areas, no problems. And um, now I can uh, uh, I could change the name just on the output uh, features. I could uh, change the name there and the, and the source, etc. Uh, sorry, the um, target folder. Could run this. Red. See how inset goes red there. So it's carried out that command now. Well, let's see. Let's turn off the buffers for a moment. And let's see, and actually let's turn off the polygon as well. Let's see this demo and set add to display. And there you go. If I just turn on the original one that got chopped out. So you can see how it got, uh, it was cookie cut. So if I, and that's the result there. You could uh, actually just turn back the buffers on. So you can see it's cut. That's my intersection object. So that's uh, done that, but let's, let's go a step further. Let's just clear the decks a bit again. Let's go a bit a step further. What about creating some s summary st statistics? We might have some values uh, attached to this, various st statistics. So we could just um, find those in here. There's statistics, summary statistics, dump them on here. Use the connector, hook these up, that's the input data, but it's still, I may have connected it, but it's still sort of hollowed out It's because um, um, it's expecting further data. And yes, it is. What about, what statistics are you actually after? Well, let's just, I don't know, let's just take the, um, well, actually, we could we could take the FI, one of the FIDs, because if more than one polygon uh, one one radius, um, one buffer intersected. We could just pick one of them because uh, I just want to know if any um, intersect. So I'll just take the maximum um, FID. So now let's run this. Let me see. Uh, it'll happen very quick. Um, and then go to this end one, select it, and say add to display. Now, of course, this is this is statistics. It's not geography, so it's a table, so it's open. And um, uh, there is our um, FID. Um, maximum one was 213. So if I look at those buffers, uh, let's turn on the buffers. Oh, capitals buffer at the display. Um, I would say this buffer. Two, one, three, and there it is.
So, um, but really, I'm just messing about with uh, variables and fields and stuff here. It could be anything. So, we've done all that. If we could hit this uh, auto layout button here, you can see how it makes it a lot tidier, a lot clearer. So, how do you save this to uh, sort of use for another day? Well, you just hit save. Uh, I've actually done this before. Let's call it my um, my uh, analysis analysis model. Save it. And let's just close. Okay, so the the next time you run this, uh, the model builder. So we're sort of working here and whatever and think. Oh, it was, I want to um, just rerun that model, perhaps on some different data or something. So. I'll click on model builder, but you see it's not there. It's not there. We, we need to open it up. So how do we open it up? Well, in um, your default toolbox, your models, that's where they're stored. They're stored in your default uh, toolbox. So there is my analysis model. But you see how it's just that one process. So you could actually use that to create further uh, complexity in a model. If you want to see what's inside just go to edit and there it is and now you're back to where you were and so you can drill down and uh, use this. So one final thing I'd like to add is the export uh, feature. Uh, there's I mean there's various other settings please you know sort of parameters about how um, how the models look, uh, there's various properties you can set, the names and descriptions, etc. And there's a lot more complexity, parameters and variables, etc. Iterative processes, and I'll do those in another video. This really is just to get you uh, to get you going. Um, and in diagram properties, actually, you could you could set how some default stuff happens, and there's a couple of options for symbology. Uh, but if we just go to export, we can export to Python script. Slash my script, for example. Here it is. So, um, so he can see the actual script derived from that model builder. So you can see how it's set. It was demo and capitals. That's right. Give some names there to uh, what I'm going to create. There's the buffer. There's the intersect. And there's the statistics analysis. So you can imagine that uh, this is a good start as well for Python uh, customization, and then adding in toolbars and stuff. Um, you could you could prompt for uh, uh, file names, etc., uh, feature names, and uh, and also of course you could put some um, uh, debug uh, and error trapping uh, in here if, if you wanted. But it's a good good way to get you uh, going straight away with the with the Python. Anyway, I hope you find that useful and uh, there'll be more on this uh, in future videos. Thank you.